Simon, um, this isn't an if, it's a when, because... Uh, this reformed uh, Champions League, this yeah. guy at the top of Juventus, Andrea Agnelli, I actually met him. At, Did uh, you indeed? Yeah, at a seminar, a big football seminar in uh, Austria some years ago, but that's just an aside. Um, everything changes in the next couple of weeks. We're going to see a reformed and expanded 2024 Champions League, and that will be finalised, Simon. Now, Agnelli himself is saying the reforms will be, quote, beautiful. Not sure about that. Uh, they, they will be beautiful reforms to expand the Champions League. They should be finalised in the next fortnight. Uh, and that will be that. Involved in all of that, Simon, as we, we've now found out, clubs qualifying for certain competitions yep. will now no longer be allowed to buy each other's players. Yep. The idea behind this is that it would actually improve indirect solidarity towards other clubs. Yeah, this is a suggestion. I mean, well, who does that mean? Mbappé couldn't go from PSG well, to Real what, Madrid. That's what they're saying. They're saying basically the very nature of the big clubs continuing to transfer players amongst themselves confines the wealth amongst themselves and somehow or another in this parallel universe where this guy lives, right, is that's going to benefit the domestic clubs. Right? The notion that he's been running, Agnelli's been running this for years, he's, he heads up an initiative called the ECA, which is the European Club Association, and he's been running this particular idea and sentiment about re, you know, restructuring the Champions League. And he's right in this article that I've read about, you know, we all got past the notion that it was the champions that are in it when they weren't actually the bulk of the clubs in it actually champions. So we can actually get to a stage where we can expand and do different things. This is all about money. Everything's about money. It's about the other leagues desperately trying to keep up. Bang on the microphone. Desperately trying to keep up with um, the domestic power of the Premier League by getting more wealth into the Champions League. If you look at what it, the Premier League winners will get 160 million quid for playing 38 games. The, the Champions League winners will play 13 games currently under the format they play in and get 110 million. So it's almost three times the money available in Champions League formats than there is in domestic. Right. So of course they're, they're thumping this one. It's kicking into the long grass. The notion, an idea that there was going to be a European Super League that was never really a flyer. The Manchester United and Real Madrid of the yeah, world yeah. with the American ownership in, in, in Man United thinking there was going to be a European Super League was probably for the birds. And this is now ramping up the opportunity. And what it really means is is they're trying to find every an answer to every single scenario. Of course, we, we, we don't want the top six getting richer. The big argument is not actually about whether this is going to increase the amount of games, it's actually the qualification for this. Because if you remember in previous shows, we've discussed this ridiculous, absurd, offensive, insulting suggestion that a coefficient is applied, that the previous season's performances of clubs like Liverpool, if they finished seventh in the league, they could still in principle qualify for the Champions League by using a coefficient which takes their previous performances into consideration yeah. and drops them into the Champions League. Yeah. So that means if you're a side... At the expense aspiring, of the Scottish champions and others. Well, no, at the expense of someone in your league, and you know, yeah. at the expense of another side that's participating in the Premier League that's occupying a space that, that would perhaps be sacrificed for a coefficient to allow a, a member of the so-called Big Six that hadn't performed that season to continue to enjoy not, the feasts of the top table whilst yeah. flicking the crumbs off at everybody else. It's ridiculous. The, you know, the, 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 the Premier League has got to vote for these things. Well, this came out of nowhere yesterday. He just introduced this to the yeah, to, I think, to the, I, I, the, the, I think the he's throwing these things out. I think, I think, you know, sometimes the best ideas are ones that are fast and loose, and sometimes they're drivel. Marco, Marcus, you know, Marco Van Basten came out a few years ago thinking I should scrap the offside rule. And everyone said, well, he was a top striker. And then everyone looked at him and went, that's a pile of crap. Yeah, right? And yeah. this isn't much better. Yeah. You know, how are you... First of all, it's a restriction of trade. Second of all, there isn't a propensity to, for clubs on the whole to transfer players between one another inside the top six. Thirdly, you know, you're not going to see any benefit to the domestic clubs. It's a wolf in wolf's clothing. It's not a wolf in sheep's clothing. Yeah. You see, I mean, no one's going to sign up to this. O o owners of the top clubs, like Madrid, like, like Barcelona, uh, uh, like Bayern Munich, and like the ones here, they're not going to buy up well, to that. And also, did I say it, Simon? Agents. Well, the flip side of it is, and here, here's where it can work if it has some... You imagine being at Raiola this morning. Here, well, transfer fees don't make people money. Moves make people money, and if you're, if you're, and if you're, if agents are being properly controlled, they should get paid from their weight player salaries. So there's nothing wrong with if you take out the top six, eight, ten, twelve clubs in Europe out of the mix and say you can't buy from one another, then you are in some way suppressing transfer values because other clubs can't afford to pay hundred million pound for X Y Z player. That's what he's driving it. Well, no, he's what he's basically saying is that these other clubs are going to be forced 
i.e. the big six clubs in each league are going to be forced to dip down the pyramid and buy players from other clubs, and subsequently these clubs can get more money from it. That's right. But if the only clubs that can afford the 100 million, because he refers deliberately to, to the, the 100 million pound transfers, if the only clubs that can afford to buy them are the clubs that are being precluded from doing it, yeah. then you're going to find a natural suppression of transfer fees which I don't think is a bad thing, but it depends on the economics of how football models... they're not models... going to do it. The top clubs aren't going to do that. They're not well, going to stop shopping in Harris to shop in Lidl. It de depends what the bigger... It's, if it's a sprat to catch a mackerel, you know, you buy it up on, you buy it up on a risk-reward risk basis. How many hundred million pound transfer fees do I do? How many hundred million pound fee players do I sell? How much more money can I get in, year in, year out, of the Champions League? If I can get myself another 25 million quid a year, 30 million quid a year, 10% of my club's turnover every year increased by being in the Champions League. And once every blue moon, I might say 100 million pound player, you never know what these people will yeah. look at for the yeah. bigger picture. Yeah. But what it is, is it's, it is it is not what it's being dressed up. It is the rich get richer. And it's going to be very difficult to see how the 14 clubs, first of all, they're never going to get this notion, idea, sentiment, philosophy of, of, a coefficient allowing clubs to qualify for Europe irrespective of their form the previous season. That's outrageous. That is, that is the living embodiment of jobs for the boys, look after ourselves mentality, which the top six are all party to, yeah. which is why most of these clubs are owned by Americans or influenced by Americans because Americans are like relegation or not qualifying for things they think they're entitled to. Sure. But in this instance, the, the, the tra changing of the transfer marketplace is just not going to happen and I it's Agnelli just throwing everything around and and so you deflect off on that we're talking about that when the, in the behind the doors they're going right we've now got an agreement we'll, we'll put something outraged out there to get an agreement over here but this guy's regarded as a major influencer what by whom he is regarded well, I'll, t I'll tell you at, at that seminar i mentioned in austria i i, I did a chat with a well, panel and on that panel was Gazidis, who's now gone from yeah. Arsenal. He's, he's, well, he's, he's, he's over at Milan. Vachka of Borussia Dortmund, but top billing went to Andrea well, Agnelli. I, well, you know, he's 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 sitting on on top of an ownership of a very influential football club. I think he's part of the Fiat group. He's family yeah. owned Fiat, didn't yeah. they? Right. So he's come he comes from a very well healed position of great influence. But the reasons why people will like it, if you ask certain clubs whether, whether he's held very highly, those that don't want to increase the Champions League will think he's not, and those that, th that do think he is. Sure. He, what he's doing is constantly looking to evolve ways to advance the old lady, Juventus. Yeah. He's not looking to look, look after anybody else but Juventus. Well, keep an eye on it, because as I said at the start of this, it's not if, it's when, uh, because the reformed Champions League will come about. And by the way, we weeks, don't need agents. Weeks weeks the question is, could players and agents really sign up to that proposal? It's got nothing to do with agents. They don't have any jurisdiction. Hmm. Do you go on with any agent? Yes, I do. On the Lots planet? Of them. Lots of them. Do any of them yeah, like I do. You? Yeah, I do. I yeah. like lots of them. I like Rob Siegel. I like the Smith Brothers, as you know. Yeah. I think David Manassi is a decent agent. There's a lot of decent agents, and there's a lot of really poor ones, too. Okay, but not me, no. Mino is irrelevant. <laughs>